What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the First Mill Podcast. Today, we have a special guest, professional MMA fighter, undefeated currently. Super excited to have Tony Cortez in the building. I've uh, been following his journey for quite some time now, before he was actually professional, and it's been cool to see the progress, see what he's doing professionally and now winning by knockouts uh, it's super entertaining to watch so today i'm excited to have him last time I, I believe we had we were sponsoring him for his last fight where he came out victorious first round knockout um so super super happy to have tony cortez in the building make some noise let's go what's up tony how are you doing today man good bro how are you good good it's been a long time coming it's our first time actually you know coming face to face now right yeah we've, we've talked a lot on social media been following you for a while um super big fan obviously first and foremost as a as a fan of of combat sports it's been really cool to see you come up and come through the trenches really um so with that one transition right away into the beginning man how did this entire mma journey start um how old were you when you first started doing all this uh i was 10 years old and i was hanging out with my grandpa in his uh in his room and then he turns the TV on, he's watching TV, and I see Chuck Liddell knock somebody out, and he had a, a mohawk, he looked crazy, and I was like, I'm gonna be one of those guys one day. That was, that was the start of it, and like literally a couple weeks later, uh, my mom put me in Taekwondo, because I was playing soccer, okay. but I was getting in a lot of trouble because I was fighting with my teammates, <laughs> <laughs> fighting with the, the coach, fighting with... Uh, other other teams and stuff and then uh she asked me she's like do you want to fight and i said yes and then she put me in taekwondo they kicked me out of taekwondo because i was too disrespectful i was a bad kid and then uh and then i got put into the ufc gym uh in mckinley and corona by costco right when it opened like pretty much right when it opened and then that's when i started training every single day four or five hours a day so that was when my whole career basically So started. Taekwondo was the first martial art that you got into? Yeah, but I only did it for maybe like two weeks and then I got kicked out. Okay, and then and after that, any specific um, martial, martial arts? arts? Yeah. Uh, I did jujitsu, I did kickboxing, and I did a, a little bit of wrestling. Okay, and well, you were still about, what, 11 years old at this time? Yeah. 11 years old. And what city was this all taking place in? This was taking place in Corona. Okay. I actually, I did kickboxing here in Wilmington okay. when I was four, four, five, and six. And then a lot what of things. What gym was it? You know? I forgot, I forgot what it was okay, called. Okay. Yeah, it's a it's a little hole in the wall. I forgot what it's called, okay. though. So with Wilmington, you're here for four to five around that age, did a little kickboxing, went into soccer, got kicked out because you were fighting with everybody. Yeah. And you're like, your mom asked you the right question. Do you want to fight? And you said, yeah. Mm -hmm. So Taekwondo after that. And what happened after that? You got into, uh, you said the UFC gym mm -hmm. and you found mentors, coaches that kind of helped you mold the way. Yeah, I used to train with uh, Philip Brown, Spencer Spiker, Johnny Cisneros, uh, uh, that was pretty much it. And then uh, they were all professional fighters. They weren't, like, in the UFC. Oh, Ricky Legier, too. They, were, they weren't in the UFC, but they were, like, they were super developed in MMA already. God. They were kind of older, you know? So they kind of paved the way for you, or they were mentors, teachers to you? Yeah. Okay, cool, cool. And um, a little bit about, tell me about, like, your childhood. How was it coming up? Because you say your mom put you into fighting because you we're fighting like with your teammates and everything like that why why did all this come about where did all this kind of my child fighting? my childhood wasn't like it wasn't the worst okay but it, it also wasn't the best you know right. i lived here in wilmington from when i was a kid and i grew up out here for a little bit and then uh my my dad went into prison and him and my mom separated so i kind of came up like a little rough because you know how it is out here it's yeah. fucking uh, it could it's get rough out here. it could get ugly, you yeah. know. Yeah. So then after that, I started moving around a lot, and I was living with your in, mom. Yeah, okay. I was living in L.A., uh, Long Beach, Buena Park, and then I ended up in Corona, and then that's when I really started like training right there. And Corona was like your your hometown, you would say now. That's what you represent. Yeah, I represent Corona. You know, I I went to high school out there and wrestled out there, and I trained out there, so it, it really molded me into like who i am now 
Got it. And Corona, you found more of like a community that, you know, you kind of wanted to grow up in? Or was it like you were forced to be there already because you guys settled down there? Yeah, it was just forced, you know, like, uh, it sounds weird, but I think that like a lot of the negative things in my life came from from the harbor area okay like my mom and stuff like they grew up in the projects here yeah and then that kind of like influenced me in a way to make certain decisions in my life and then being in corona kind of brought me out of that lifestyle that i was getting into do you think staying here would have it would have been bad if you would have stayed here if i would have stayed in wilmington yeah it would have been really bad to be honest no that's good to say man i think a lot of people need to hear that too because we tend to want to love the city we kind of were born in as childhood and like want to force ourselves to like grow up here and live here our entire lives but for you leaving this area actually benefited you yeah to be honest because yeah. well i mean when i was younger it wasn't like my dad wasn't the best influence you know and but now he is because he tells me like that lifestyle's for the birds because he's already been there, done that to the point where I don't have to go and do that because I've seen where it took him. God. So I've already made my own decisions to to make my fighting career. OK, awesome, man. Uh, that's really, really good to hear. Now, as far as like going into amateur fighting, you were a four time state champion. Yeah. Right. Let's talk about that, man. How did all that come about? What gym helped you? shape your way into getting into that were you like in high school or what age did you start like really getting into the the amateurs and, and your road to that four-time state championship so the amateur started like i think i was 20 years old and uh i started training with uh icon mma first but i was really bad on drugs so then uh i was living with uh this egyptian guy okay. and i was living in a shed and fucking, it was... Like in the back of his house or something yeah, like that? Yeah, it was okay. so dirty. It was nasty. Yeah. And then uh, one day, I'm just like, man, fuck this shit. Like, I would train during the week, and I would get high on the weekends, and I'd get fucked up, and then come back and train again. And I wasn't really doing good. So then I, I came home to my mom, and I'm like, look, I need some help. Like, I don't want to be on drugs anymore. I want to change my life. Like, I want to start fighting, you know? I want to take this shit serious. What made that? right there what what made that change you were tired of like the i was just i was just tired of of living in the fucking the thoughts that i had you know like what the i don't know if it was drugs or whatever that i was going through i had a lot a lot of negative thoughts a lot like my life was it was like i was living in hell like every day was the same thing over and over and over and over and it was just paranoia mm -hmm. so i'm like i'm i hate I hate this life. Like, I don't want to do this anymore. I want to be positive. I want to, I want to be different. Like, cause if not, I'm probably going to fucking kill myself Yeah. to be honest, you know? So you got to that point. I got to that point where it was like make or break. Like yeah. I'm either going to do this or I'm going to fucking, I'm not going to do it. And Any, then anything specific that happened to like switch that because it, 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 it's a lot of, pl I want to use this as an example. It's a place where a lot of people go and we tend to go there throughout our lives in different times of our lives like you went through it at that time it doesn't mean you're not going to go through it again but what is like a tool that kind of helped you get out of it or make that like switch uh, what do you mean make the switch like so so you're you're tired of of living there you know and, it, and people get really addictive to to that mentality where it's hard for them to really change was it because you had a bigger purpose you're like this is really what the fuck i want to do you know, you're like, fuck everything else. Fuck these negative thoughts. I really want to get to my place that I want to be at. I think uh, a lot of the time it was seeing seeing people fight in the UFC and feeling that I could do better than them. And I, that, yeah, I could be better. At, yeah. And I'm like, I know I could do better. I know I could be better. And I, and I really feel like I could be a good person and be a good example. Because I like, I don't know, I was tired of looking up to like the wrong people. And I'm like, I don't, like if and nobody else is going to do it, then I, I guess I got to do it. So that right. was like my, my drive right there. There it is. Yeah. And then, so you would say like, I'm seen as like your competitive drive to be like, I could whoop, I could be better than this guy. I could whoop his ass. Like I'm way better than this guy that's on TV making some money. Like that your competitive drive is kind of what pushed you to get out of this yeah. hole that you were in. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. And that's, that's kind of what the things that I want to talk about, like the competitiveness in you, um, did once that happened, you started getting focused into martial arts at the age of 20. 
You took it serious, yeah. dropped the drugs, and you're like, let's fucking go. Well, so first off, I got off drugs. Mm -hmm. And then that's when I, I started training at Joe Daddy Stevenson's gym in Cobra Kai. And I was still kind of a little, like, uh, not all there from, okay. from the things I had done. A little paranoid and, and living in the... Uh, and my thoughts, like any thought that came to my mind, I thought it was true or real, but it wasn't. It was just, it was just my own darkness that was fucking with me, you know? Yeah. So then, uh, I'm, li I'm, I'm living at my mom's and I'm training at Joe Daddy Stevenson's gym. And then it's kind of, I'm still like, I'm not all there mentally. And then, uh, and then I have my first fight in Arkansas and I win my fight, but at the same time, I'm still kind of doing bad shit, you know? And then uh, my mom tells me, I was causing a lot of problems at home. So then my mom tells me, she's like, hey, I was going to go do ayahuasca. She's like, but I can't go anymore because I have work. She's like, do you want to do it? And I said, yeah. I was like, I, I want to try it. Let's see what, like, if it can help me. What's so, ayahuasca? Ayahuasca is a brew that... The indigenous of Peru or Mexico, they make it out of like a, a tree vine and like other herbs and stuff. And it gives, it puts you through a spiritual journey. And they say it's like 50 years of, of therapy in, in a couple hours, you know? So then I'm like, hell, like, let's do it. Like, I want to try this. Let's see if it can help me. And then I go and I do some ayahuasca in Peru and I'm out there for two weeks and I do uh, five ceremonies in 10 days. So you do a ceremony, take a day off. Do a ceremony, take a day off. And uh, when I come back, I come back a completely different person. I'm not even eating, like, sugar or chips or nothing. Like, I'm so disciplined, it's ridiculous. And I don't have the same thoughts that I used to have. Or I, I, maybe I would have some of the thoughts, but the thoughts weren't as strong. They had no power over me because I was I was a lot mentally stronger and I knew exactly who I was and what I was meant to do on this planet. And then I came back a couple months later. I won my first title right away, right away. Talk about your ayahuasca journey, if you don't mind. Like what what how was it the experience? Um, I've, I've heard about it. I've, I, I think I studied about it for quite some time now. Um, and I hear everyone has different experiences with it. Some people, um, I've heard Miley Cyrus right on a Joe Rogan podcast where she's throwing up like all the food, all the animals that she ate. And that's why she went vegan for a while. Um, Jake Paul's done it before too. It dropped his ego completely to a, like a minimal level where he also found his purpose. So what would be your experience? What, what, what how was it? If you don't mind, I would say the most, uh, the biggest thing that happened to me was that I stopped being selfish and I stopped looking at the cup halfway gone and then I started looking at it halfway full. So I saw the things that I did have and then I used that to my advantage to create the life that I'm starting to live now. Love to hear that, man. That's awesome. So I was completely 360 your life completely came in a yeah. whole new person won your championship what a month later you said mm, maybe like three months later three months after that three four four months later after yeah okay so it's literally like a result right away from being disciplined i learned oh and another thing i learned was that like the life that i'm gonna live is that the, the things that i'm gonna create in my mind like uh i'll say what happened though i was i was laying there right and then I see a fucking alien in the corner of the fucking of the room that yeah. we're in. And I'm like, what the fuck? And I'm like, there's fucking aliens here. Like they're, they're here for me. Yeah. It sounds like I'm high as fuck. Right. Yeah, yeah. And then, uh, then I turn into an Eagle and I'm flying over this fucking war and I see robots like just marching uh -huh. and I'm, I'm like a, I'm an animal. I'm not, I'm not a robot. I'm not. And then, uh, I start saying, I'm going to kill these people or I'm going to kill these robots. And I start going down and I start fucking these robots up. And then, I, and then I'm like, I'm going to get shot. I'm going to get shot. I'm going to get shot. And then I get shot. And then I come back to myself and I'm like, and then I realize how powerful my thoughts are. And I was like, if I'm in a fight and I'm thinking I'm going to get hit or I'm going to get knocked out, I'm going to get knocked out. But if I come into a fight knowing I'm going to win, 
thinking I'm going to win and making that happen in my mind over and over and over, there's no way I'm ever going to lose, ever, ever. Love. So it's all mental. I agree. Agree. So you believe in manifestation and all that? Hell yeah. I'll tell you a story. One time, uh, well, my brother, my he's my cousin, but he's really my brother. My grandma raised us, and he passed away from a fentanyl overdose. And uh, it was two months before one of my, my biggest fight, my first California state title fight, which I was already nervous about because when I was in high school wrestling, I was so mentally weak, I never thought I could amount to being a California state title champion. So it, now it came into MMA, and I'm thinking, I'm starting to think the same thing where I'm getting this fear inside of me, like where I don't feel good enough about myself. And then my brother passes away. And then uh, I just changed that, those thoughts in my head. And I cry every single day. I cry every single day. But I pray to God and I ask him to please let me knock this guy out in less than 10 seconds. And then over and over and over and over in my head for hours, I would tell myself, I will knock Dino Ibarra out in less than 10 seconds. And I would say it out loud. I would say it in my mind. And then until I started believing it. I would say it so much as like it already happened. And I go in there and I knock him out in six seconds. Shit, that's crazy, man. So the whole manifestation, you kept repeating this thing over and over in your head, you brought it to fruition. I would write it down. Anytime I, I would have a negative thought like, oh, I can't do it. I would just start writing yeah. and I, I will knock him out. I will knock him out. I will knock him out. You would write it down literally on paper. Yeah, for pages. I would have like three, four pages done after writing it over and over and over and over. But I'd be very, I'd be very precise with it. Where it's like, uh, let's say we fought June 6th. I'm like, June 6th, at this time, I will knock Galdino Ibarra out in less than 10 seconds. And I would do it over and over and over and over. And it came to fruition. Yes. Do you still use that tactic now? I haven't. I haven't. Now I just been I just been chilling where it's like, I know I'm gonna go in there, I'm gonna fuck this fool. You believe in yourself super heavily. It's like ridiculous. Yeah. Like I don't have one thought in my mind that that makes me think I'm ever gonna lose. I know every single fight I go in there, if I put if I train hard, I'm gonna be everybody. It doesn't matter who it is. It doesn't matter who it I'm is. I'm gonna smash everybody. Love to hear I don't care who the fuck it is. That's I'm going to find a way to win. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's dope, man. So this happened and you won your first state championship like that? Yeah. So first state championship. How, how did the, the winnings come after that? Same ritual, same whoever they put in front of you. I seen a bunch of your face-offs and you're intense, man. You're intense because I see the confidence that like it gushes out of you. The confidence that you have, the energy, like it gushes out of you and it goes into the, the opponent too because they also feel that shit. They also feel the confidence that you have. And if you're mentally weak, you know, you're going to, doubt yourself at some point when someone that confident comes in because you're giving this like aura of like greatness you know mm -hmm. like i'm so fucking confident i'm gonna fucking whoop your ass that now they start doubting themselves yeah so i think i think that that really really helps a lot i believe in manifestation um truly truly and an example is this building like we manifested this with my dad like we both sat down we literally drew it literally before we even had it before we had this building we wrote down how much we were gonna make we drew this this entire building we knew where everything was gonna be manifested into existence so i a thousand percent believe in manifestation how powerful it is yeah i hundred percent man so um after that after that tell me more about the journey in the amateurs and and how you got into the pros uh, ever since my brother passed away i just had a sense of confidence that i feel like the other fighters just couldn't couldn't relate to me and then after that i just fucking ran through everybody like nothing yeah I was like, you guys are nowhere. I'm meant to be great because of the things that I've been through. And, and like, my bro I'm not going to let my brother die for no reason. And I'm like, I'm going I'm to come in there. I was like, you're either going to fucking kill me or I'm going to fucking kill you. And I'm like, because I'm going to help people get off drugs. I'm going to help people get off fentanyl. And I'm going to be that example for the youth and for people that can relate to me. Because I was on fentanyl for two years, you know? Yeah. And then, you know, and, I'm your not, brother, your and brother. then my brother kind of followed in my footsteps. And then it's not fair that I got out and he didn't. And then now I'm living for him in a way, you know, I feel that. living in a way to like his name is not going to go unrecognized, you know, like 
I'm going to start foundations. I'm going to open up gyms and I'm going to help kids get off of drugs and I'm going to help. I'm going to help people. I'm not going to let his death go out for no reason. hundred percent, man. That's dope to hear. Um, you have a bigger purpose now. Yeah. Way bigger than yourself. And you've brought your brother along this journey spiritually or, you know, his memory or whatever his name, you're going to bring it along with you too. So I think having that bigger purpose has definitely played a big role. Would you say into what you're doing now? You definitely, uh, I go into these fights knowing that some of these guys just want to look like a fighter, you know, or they want to fucking, uh-huh. they want to be cool or this and that. It's like, no, motherfucker, I'm fighting. I'm here to fucking kill you. Yeah. I'm not here For to more fucking. than just this fucking win, honestly, yeah. right? Like this is, this is one win in my path to fucking greatness. Now, I'm going to be great. Yes. I'm going to be amongst Mike Tyson and Muhammad Ali. Yep. I'm going to be up there. It's like, if you're trying to get in my way. I promise you, I will fucking, I'll put you out in front of your mom. Yep. And that's what I tell them. And that's how it has to be, man. The confidence <laughs> you have to gush. It is. It is kill or be killed. You exactly. Say, that's your motto, right? Yeah. Kill or be killed. And I love that mentality, man. I really do. I, I try to apply it in business. I do. Um, and it is that, man. It is about being competitive. Yeah. So, so going into the pros, um, how mm-hmm. old were you when you went, when you went pro? Uh, I was uh, 21. 21. And you, how old are you right now? 22 so, so you've been pro for what a year a year i'm about to be 23 okay about when's your birthday september okay it's coming up it's coming up okay so you're undefeated right now mm-hmm. all your wins by what knockout i got a lot of wins by submission and a lot of wins by knockout okay and i got one decision win okay one when i was like yeah well, this is probably my first fight so all your wins have come by like you've been finish. ending them finish damn i didn't know that that's yeah. crazy man so one decision yeah what happened there it was just a quick two-minute round fight. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, was, okay. I didn't really have time to finish them. Yeah. All right. I see. And the the last fight that you... We were just talking about it right now. Um, let's go back to that one. The elbow one. The elbow like knockout? That, that one went viral, basically, <laughs> man. That went crazy. How? Tell me about that fight. Did you manifest that? Did you think about it before? No. Just kind of let it flow. Honestly, that was my coach that 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 brought that to fruition because we were practicing that elbow the whole day before the fight he's like i want you to throw this right here my coach sam mason best striking coach in the world okay facts and then uh he's just like you know i want you to throw this elbow right here when he starts getting all loopy and trying to take you down throw the elbow and then we fight and i'm fucking knock him out with the elbow Ooh. i didn't even know i knocked him out i hit him with the elbow uh-huh. i have my eyes closed and i look back and he's gone uh-huh. i'm like what the fuck and i look yeah. down and i'm like all right and i hit him again i'm like all right, fuck. he's been done by that time he went freaking face back man that's great. yeah that's great great i saw that fight too i remember that one um yeah man so right now you're three and oh undefeated um how'd you make your way from amateurs to to the to the pros were you like drafted how does that work Pretty much, uh, the the owner of uh, the promotion that I was fighting for for amateur is the director of the promotion that I fight for now. So it was kind of like a feeder into that promotion. Okay, got it, got it. So then they brought you back into Combate Global, where you're at right now. Yeah. And what's the plan with that currently? The plan is uh, fucking get in there and smoke everybody that they got in front of me. And if they pay me well, then I'm going to stay with them. If they don't, then... Uh, Peace out, cause, yeah. yeah, okay. So. But if they pay me shit, I'll stay with them. Give huh. me 40 G's for a fight. I'm chilling with that. <laughs> with that to start off, huh? <laughs> shit, okay. Cool, man. And you guys, is, is it, how many more fights do you have with them right now? I got three more fights with them, but right now I'm going to fight outside my contract. Okay. Maybe like three fights, August, September, November. Okay, to stay active? Yeah. Okay, that's the goal, to stay active. It's, just, it's still pro fights, right? So they're going to be on your record and everything. Yeah. Cool. When's the next fight that you have coming up right now or scheduled or anything? I don't about? have anything like set in stone yet, but we're looking at August. Fighting, fighting in August and then fighting in September. Okay. Yeah. And right now when you see these, let's say when your opponents see your, your resume already, do you think they're scared already? Do you think they're not trying to fight? Because I feel that, man. I feel like no one's trying to, like, really step up or they back out for some little issue when, like, at this point in your career, you, everyone's, you know, coming up. You're young. Um, they got to prove themselves. Mm-hmm. And, like, I think one of the guys backed out for some reason recently to one of your fights. I think... I think the guy you just knocked out, he backed out yeah. before, right? And it's like, bro, it's a, it's a fight. Like, what's up, you know? And I know you gave him some of your purse and everything like that. But yeah. what's up with all these guys? Like, what do you think about I, I, what you said right now? They want to act like fighters. Yeah. You know? do, you, do you feel like that's common right now with, with 
Too much Instagram, too much TikTok. They ain't really out there fucking really fighting. Like before all the bullshit, I was fighting in the street just because yeah. I loved fighting. Yeah. I didn't care about getting paid or or fucking looking cool or what shorts or whatever the fuck these people care about. All I wanted to do was fight. Yeah. I didn't care about nothing. Like you give me fighting, food, water. My girlfriend, I'm chilling. Beyonce? <laughs> huh? Beyonce? My fiance, there yeah. There you go. <laughs> I'm chilling. I'm chilling, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. All right. All these fights, you're 3-0. and oh. How do you train? How do you train? Um, I know you have coaches. How's your training regimen? How many times a week do you train? Anything particular that like, you want to like, like you wrestle some days, strike some days, different coaches strengthening, all that kind of stuff. Let's talk about that. So I'll say in a week. Um, Monday, I train 11 to 1, and that's mostly grappling, MMA, grappling, wrestling, jiu-jitsu, and then go home, come back to the gym, 6 to 8, train again. And then Tuesday, we do striking 12 to 2, and then we have strength and conditioning from about, like, 3 to 4, and then after that, we come back to the gym 6 to 8. And that's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then Friday is kind of just uh, a lot of running and then training one time and then Saturday sparring. Saturday sparring. So spar once a once a week. Mm, we spar every day, <laughs> but I think Saturday is more so like strictly sparring. Got it. Got yeah. it. And who are these people that you're sparring with? People at the gym? Yeah, I spar with Bobby Green, uh, Elijah Leggett, Andre Yule. Uh, 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 fuck, what's his name? Uh, Dominic Reyes' brother. I forgot okay. his name. I can't fucking remember. Okay, for sure. Uh, we spar with a lot of fucking beasts, but mostly like the guy who I spar with the most, two guys, is uh, Bobby Green and Elijah Leggett. Nice. Both pros, right? Yeah. And Andre Ewell, my bad. Okay. Those are like the best guys in the gym right there. And you guys all train at the same gym? Yeah. Sick, sick, man. And so, full schedule. Yeah. Full, full schedule. You're a thousand percent dedicated into this. There's no going back. This is what you're going to do. Facts. Uh, I'm not doing shit else. That's, that's I'm building up around uh, what I do. So MMA is, 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 this is my opportunity to make a lot of money. Yeah. And then outside, I just got my license to sell life insurance. Nice. So I'll sell it. My plan is to sell it yeah. while doing my MMA career. And then whatever else comes into to what I'm trying to do. How'd you get into the life insurance? I know I saw, I saw your, um, you met Patrick Bed David. Yeah, which is uh, I mean he has his own YouTube channel, super like big entrepreneur. Yeah, is it through something like that, is it P? What's the name? PHP. Of the, PHP, right? Yeah, which is, was his company, I believe, until he sold it. He just sold it. Yeah, yeah. he just sold it for a couple million. A couple million. Five hundred million. <laughs> yeah, I got. I was like a couple million. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he did sell it for some big stuff. So you're you're part of that right now. Yeah. Um, are you going to the August one in Vegas? There's a there's a convention the, out there. Uh, I might. I'm not sure. Okay, Depending okay. on if I have a fight in August, sure. I'm not going to go. That's priority, right? The, the MMA is always going to be the priority. Yeah, exactly. How'd you get into the life insurance? My mom actually got me into life insurance. Okay. She got her license first, and then she recruited me. Yeah. And then it's like it. I do have a a, a big audience to make to to make some money, and then and help uh, some of the fighters get their insurance because they're not insured. Yep. And it's like if you guys get hurt. It's like, you guys can't fight. What are you guys going to do yep. to make money? And I think a lot of fighters don't pay attention to that. So I got my IUL. Yeah. I have, uh, I got everything. You're certified already. and everything. Yeah. That's dope. Yeah. So a lot of the fighters too, they have to understand, I I think, they're entrepreneurs at the end of the day. You guys are 1099, right? Yeah. So you guys are independent contractors. Yeah. You have to figure out a way to get your own insurance. You got to figure out a way to create revenue with your audience, especially with Instagram and all the social media stuff. Because like you said, if you get injured, you're out for what, a year? No pay, nothing. Like you got to have something in your back end. You're doing it the smart way. I think it, having another option, not just because you're going to get injured or anything, but maximize what you're doing on the road to 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 your successful path which right. is be great in mma right yeah so a lot of money's going to come from that i'm i guarantee it i'm with your skills that you have um back to the training though um six times a week then you train one day rest day yeah but even on the rest day when i when i'm getting ready for a fight i'll still go run okay 
Yeah. Always putting in the work. I'm always working. You, you, what got you so disciplined? What is the thing that got you like really focused? Ever since I was 10 years old, I was training four hours every single day. I just, it was, I don't, I don't even really call it discipline. I just love what I do. It's part of you. Yeah. You've done it for so long. Like it's become a habit now. So yeah. You've always put in the work regardless of what it is. Like, especially fighting. You're always putting in the work. Yeah. So well, well, even like I, when I'm outside of like a fight, I don't really train. Okay. To be honest, okay. I'll really take that break, and I'll and then I'll I'll start to miss what I do. Yeah, and I'm like, then I hit it really hard. So you, you like know? missing it for a little bit, so you can fucking come back strong. Yeah, I'm like, I fucking miss hitting people so yes. bad. <laughs> it sounds weird, but I'm like, I <laughs> no, really do. You're a do. fighter, man. You're a fighter. I'll be wanting to understand that you're a fighter. It's what you do. It's in your blood, and that's where you're gonna be great. Yeah, you know, that's why you are great. Let's say it now. You like you are great. Yeah, you know because that's what you do. It is what you do. Like. Everyone takes different paths. What you do, people have to understand, this is who I am. I'm mm -hmm. a fighter. I like to punch people. I like to hit things. I like it. Like, people need to understand that. And the more we understand that, it's going to give belief to other people, like, basically accepting themselves. Because society tends to think, like, whatever you feel has to come from you. Like, it literally comes from somewhere. It comes from somewhere. And the fact that you're saying, you know, it's, it sounds weird. It does sound a little different, I would say. But you're a fighter. Yeah. It's what you do. I, I, uh, another thing that I learned from ayahuasca was learning to accept myself and like the negative and the positive, you know, I, I could be a really nice person, but at the same time, I have something inside me that just will fucking destroy some something or somebody yeah. like like a, a real darkness yes. just from what like the things that I've been through or, you know, I don't know what it is, genetics or what, whatever. But you believe you were born in the past? Like you think re reincarnate? I mean, I've been told that. I think so. Maybe I don't know. I don't really know. Okay. Maybe, maybe to be honest, because there's a lot of karma, you know, that I think happens that too. I think because like genetics come from somewhere. Like I have this dark side too that you talk about, you know, and it, and my life was pretty good. I had loving parents, you know. Like I grew up. Yeah, we had our challenges. Grew up in Wilmington, but I still have this energy sometimes. I don't know where it comes from. Like this dark side, mm -hmm. um, you say kind of genetics, right? How do you how do you balance it? I've heard you say before that you know once you get in the cage or when you're fighting, you know when to tap into that dark side, when to go in for the kill, when you have to be patient. Like you've balanced yourself a lot yeah. in life. Now I notice a lot in life and in the cage. Mm -hmm. So I think let's talk about that. How 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 do you manage to balance that? Because I know the dark side can completely take over. Yeah. At some point, and you just, it could fuck you up to be Yeah, like that's what happened to me up. when I was on drugs. Okay. The dark side just fucking, I was just a very dark person, like just doing the wrong things. But at the at my heart, at my core, I knew that that's not who I really was. It's like I was just, it's like I was kind of like trying to prove something in a way, mm -hmm. like that I was fucking this person yeah. until I realized that. I'm really am that person. I don't have nothing to prove. Like I could just chill the fuck out, and like people will try to fight me at like a bar or something. I'm like I'm not, I don't even want to fight you. Yeah. Like I don't care. You know whatever you can say whatever you want, it's fine. Um, you have nothing to prove anymore. Like you feel like you have nothing to prove as far as like your character. Like you yeah, know who you are. My character and who I am. But when it comes to MMA, I got a lot to prove. Yes, exactly. And it's like I'll smoke everybody yeah. in the fucking cage. I don't care who it is. So yeah, but so you balance that in the cage too. In the cage, yeah, because in certain times, there there is a there's a time and place for things. Like there's a time to be calm. And to be collected and to see the moves that are, to see the punches or kicks that are coming. And then when you find that opening, that's when you can let all that out. And that's why I think I'm good is because I'm so mean that when I see those openings, I want that to hurt. Like, I, I don't, I don't want to waste one punch or one kick. I'm like, no, everything that I throw, I want it to land with precision and I want it to fucking hurt you like really bad. Yeah. And, like, even in my first fight, my, my landing percentage was 96%. 96%. Like, that's fucking that's crazy. That's crazy. Accuracy. Yeah. Efficiency. You would call that efficiency. Like, you're not going to throw just to throw. You're throwing calculated and to fucking hurt. Yeah. It's for them to feel it. Like, if I'm going to throw, it's going to mean something. Yeah. Basically. 
There's no flash to it. There's nothing. It's just pure fucking grit and meanness. Like, it's just right up in your fucking face. Like, you better... It's gonna, something's gonna happen. <laughs> yeah, you know, I love that, man. I love it. I mean, I could break it down in business terms. I could break it down in whatever term you want. But you're efficient. You're efficient. At the end of the day, you want everything to be precise. You want everything to mean something. You want it. If you're gonna put your energy into it, it's for a reason. If not, you'd rather not third. At ninety six percent accuracy, I think that's how you're operating. Yeah, right. You're operating I want, in life I want too. Perfection. Yes. When it comes to my technique, I want perfection. Yes. When it comes to anything, I want. I want precision i want perfection and i won't settle for anything else yeah nice man so you're 22 about to turn 23 let's talk about your mindset Mm -hmm. like you 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 are very 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 mature you give that aura you give like i'm not sure if you read do you read do you you consume youtube content like what is it that kind of is shaping your mindset because it it's looking like it's it's very mature for for your age thank you um i don't do too much reading uh me and my fiance read a little bit but um, I, lo- I watch a lot of YouTube videos, and to be honest, I watch a lot of Patrick Bed David, uh, Michael Franzis, mm-hmm. and I watch, I watch guys like that because I think in, in my heart, in my soul, I feel like those are people that I can genuinely look up to and want to model my life after rather than all these other people who fucking do shit for views. And it's like the world has come into such an ugly place Or when I get to the UFC, I want to make sure that my life has a lot of, it's respect, it could be respected, and I have a lot of morals and values. And that's like the complete opposite of where I come from and what I've been taught, you know, just from watching the the outer world, you know. But I've changed my perspective internally, and I've been able to realize that those things are not what I want, you know. The drugs, the drinking, the partying, the the girls, it's just, it doesn't mean anything. It has no value to it, and it's never going to get you anything. Like my coach tells me, he can't think back to a day where he wished he could have drank more. (laughs) You know? Yeah, like you can't think back, oh, I wish I drank more that day. Like, no, you the fuck? Shit, that's a good one. Yeah, so I want to live, I want to step into the scene. Uh, uh, completely different than the people that are my age, and I want to, and that's the way that I'm gonna stand out. I'm not gonna stand out by fucking colorful hair, colorful hair, or or shadow boxing in some gay ass underwear. <laughs> like I'm not gonna do none of that weird yeah. shit. Like yeah. that's not how I'm gonna attract attention. I'm gonna keep my morals and values, and I'm gonna I'm gonna act right. Love to hear that, man. And for your age, like you very. Very mature, man. I, do you, I think now hearing it, everything that you went through kind of sped up the process to where you're at now. Because at 22, 23, it's very, very uncommon to hear people talk that way about morals, values, being an example already for, like, people to come, people looking up to you already. Because you know you're going to be an example. You know you're going to be great. You know people are going to look up to you. Whether you're, It's a responsibility. And you've accepted that, right? Mm-hmm. You've accepted that you have to have core values that you stand for not fuck up because people are going to look up to you and you see it you see athletes boxers that get this fame get this money and it's it's already fucking them up you know people don't want to look up to people like that and i agree with society what you're saying about society there's not that many people you can trust i always talk about how we have our messengers we have those people that we look up to and we listen to because we like them and we can relate somehow to their journey to what they are aspiring for yeah that and like you have patrick but david for example which is really one of the best people out there right now in on social media and on this planet really immigrant built a company out of scratch like it's a really good model that you have and you've met yeah. him before too right yeah he's a really nice guy nice guy humble worth like over a hundred almost 200 million dollars lives in florida and he's super humble yeah right super humble so i think that's a very good um person to have as an example um these mentors these mindsets they're 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 shaping you to to be great, man. They really are. Um, mm. Let's talk about. Um, we talked about mentors. We talked about the people that you know you looking up to. But let's talk about your circle. My your circle, circle. Your circle. Your your family that supports you. I see them at 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 your um, at your fights. They're always there. Mm-hmm. Um, it might be a small circle. Some people come sometimes because you're fighting and you're gonna come out. But I know there's people out there that really support you. It could be your fiance. It could be your mom. These people that this journey isn't alone, man. This journey takes takes a lot of people to be a part of. So 
Who are some people that, that your support system? Who's your support system right now? Uh, my fiance for sure. You know, she does my meal preps. She's there for me mentally, spiritually. She helps me out a lot, you know, and I was going down the wrong path, but she helped me get back on track and do the right thing. And then uh, I would say my mom's kind of built my character a little bit and just kind of showed me, guided me in the right direction. You know, it started off bad, but now it's coming to a good place. And then my grandparents, you know, my grandpa's a, a very good man. My grandma is there for me a lot. She supports me. And I'm like the pride of the family now. So yeah. my, I would say my family is very supportive of me. And that's that's really my circle. I don't have too many friends, yeah. to be honest. Good. I don't really have friends. Uh, I just have my family, my fiance, and then uh, my team, and that's it. Yeah. Do you think um, not having the best mentors or people around when you were first coming up, you kind of learned from what not to do instead of what to do? Yeah. Right? So, you know, coming up in, in, different, in different parts of the world and different classes of income, right? We tend to want to follow exactly what the next the person next to us is doing, whether it's gangbang, do drugs, and things like that. But you saw that and you chose not to do it. I chose to do it for a while. Uh -huh. Like I fell into that trap. Okay. Until uh, you know, honestly, I'm very blessed because I was doing fentanyl every single day for two years. A lot of my friends passed away. My brother passed away. You know, and uh. Ever since that, I I knew that I was that I was blessed and I wasn't living for myself anymore. It was more so like uh, my life was just bigger purpose, a bigger purpose. Like I'm not even I don't even I don't even really want to be myself, you know, like because yeah. myself is a selfish person. I only care about what I want and what I need and, and all these things. But I don't want to be that. I want to be. God's person. That's that's, that's my goal, and that's that's what I really want. But I make mistakes constantly. Every single day, I make mistakes. But at the end of the day, I know that in my heart, that I really want to be a good person. Yeah, love it. You believe in God? Of course, hundred percent. Even though you went through this ayahuasca thing and everything, you know there's a God. Yeah, that, that's what that was made me feel closest to God was ayahuasca. Really, I actually saw Jesus come to me when I did ayahuasca. And like, I, and then, uh, you know, like growing up, I always looked up to people, right? I looked uh -huh. up to like uh, Scarface, my yeah. dad, all these people, right? And I think, and I'm thinking that these guys are men because they have money, power, and respect, and they have all these things, right? And then I started kind of living my life like that, where it's like, those are the things that I wanted. Well, what does Scarface say is like, first comes the money, then comes the power, then, then comes, comes the women. women. Yeah. yeah, right? So I was, I was living my life like that, and then I realized, like, that's not what I want. Like, look at the end of the movie, right? Yeah, what the fuck? Okay, he gets killed. Yeah, he yeah. gets killed. I'm like, no, nah, like, honestly, when my fiance came into my life, it was like, I really want to live my life like Jesus. And, you know, I want to be different. I want to be. She brought that faith to you? Yeah. Love it, man. You guys read the Bible and everything? Yeah. Really? Yeah. So she's a blessing. Yeah. She's an angel to you, man. Yeah. Love it. So she brought the whole um, Christianity to you. Catholic, yeah. I don't know if Christian I believed in God before I met her, but I wasn't like, I didn't really follow like Christianity yeah. and the morals and respect. There's still certain things that I don't agree with, with that are in the yeah. Bible, but a lot of it I do agree with. And I think that it's a good way to like, like uh model your life after exactly i agree 100 percent, man that's dope and um to talk about your 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 support system specifically your fiance i think this journey is going to be a tough one but it's not impossible and you are going to need someone that's going to believe in you more than you believe in yourself sometimes and that's going to be your fiance i tell you this out of experience i've been with my wife for over almost 20 years now nothing would be possible without having her by my side having her like through the tough times ups downs everything bro mm -hmm. so you're meant to be great i truly truly believe that man. thank it's a, you it's a, it's a really good good you're gonna be a very very good example to a lot of people so when you're prepping for these fights going back to to mma when you're prepping for these fights how's your dieting and all that right now 
Honestly, my fiance does my whole diet. Oh, she does meal her. preps. Oh, yeah. does she? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So she's the one. She's she's the one that gets you through the through through your um, dieting through the training camps. Yeah. Okay. So you diet with her. What's the what's the company called? Get fit with Brit. Okay, sweet. Your official sponsor right yeah. now. All right, sweet brother. <laughs> Hell yeah. Oh, get if she have an Instagram and everything? Yeah. All right, what is it? That's it. Get fit with Brit. Oh, get fit with Brit. Okay, yeah. for sure. And then she's already has a meal prep plan. We can all go to her. Mm -hmm. Really start getting everything. And that's your official training camp. So if you see you yeah. fit, is is what you're eating. Yep. All right, brother. So um you're dieting with her. Anything specific that that during training camp, how you diet? Just a lot of uh, a calorie deficit, a lot of running, a lot of training, and then uh, eat, just eating less calories, okay, but eating you, clean food. What do you walk around at right now? Like what 175. 175? Yeah. Okay, you cut down to? 145. Sheesh. Yeah. What's that, 30? 30 pounds. Damn. 30 pounds. How are those weight cuts? A lot of people don't understand it, man. Tell us about them. It's grueling. <laughs> I think, like, I'm so happy she's with me, though, because... Honestly, the whole two months that I'm going through these weight cuts is like withdrawals from like sugar and all these other things that I eat, like carbs. And I'm like, I'm fucking going insane. I'm going crazy because I can't eat or drink the things that I want to. And then uh, the week of the fight is the water cut. And then that's the hardest part of the weight cut. So how are you? How much do you weigh before you go into like the the water, the water cut, yeah. one fifty seven. Shit, so you drop down that much just off food. Off food, yeah. yeah. Calorie deficit, one seventy five to one fifty seven. Damn, just off food. Just How off long does food. that take? One month. Uh, like six weeks. Six weeks. Yeah, six Shit. weeks. How do you feel there? I Week? feel honestly, I feel good. At one like one when you're walking around that weight, I feel strong. Yeah, I still feel strong. I don't start feeling weak until the water cut. Okay, but I'm very irritable. You're during, like, don't fuck with me yeah, at that time. I hate Wait, everybody. Wait, during the six weeks. During the six weeks, I hate everybody. <laughs> All right, don't come across Tony during those six weeks. <laughs> like, any little question, like, makes me mad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, people are like, oh, when are you going to fight? I'm like, fuck you. Don't like, what the, Instagram, Yeah, bro. like, come on. Like, what the fuck? You think I want to talk about that right now? Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> so you get down to 157, then the weight. The then water the water. Weight. Then I cut 11 pounds of water. And how long? A week? Uh, not even a week. Like, a day. A day. Yeah. One day you have to cut down 11 pounds. So I always try to explain to my friends and my wife this, like how hard that is, how hard it is to cut those pounds. What are some things that you guys, do you guys get in the sauna to drop all that, all that weight? Yeah. So this is how it starts. First, you rub sweet sweat or albaline all over your body, right? So you put a thick layer of sweet sweat. Real nasty. Fucking the smell gives me PTSD. <laughs> <laughs> so I rub it all over my body, every fucking inch of my body. Then I go inside the sauna for 15 minutes, sit at the top so it's hot. And then during, while you're sitting in the sauna, you have your sauna suit. And then you have all the layers of clothes you put on top of your sauna suit. So a shirt, your underwear. And then two sweats, two sweaters, and then a big ass jacket. And then you put your your socks, tuck them into your sweats, and then you put your shoes on. So there's no there's no air that's getting in in anything. So it's hot. It's hot while you're inside of it too. So by the time you go out of the sauna and you get on the treadmill, now you walk at 3.5 incline and then 3.5 speed for 45 minutes, and you haven't ate or drank anything in a whole day. Right? Yeah. You walk that 45 minutes, you lose about five pounds. Now you take everything off and you go back in the sauna for 15 minutes. And then you go back in the sauna for 15 minutes. And then uh, you get out for five minutes. And then you go back in the sauna for 15 minutes, get out for five minutes until you make the weight. Until you make the weight. That's yeah. like what, 24, 48 hours before the weigh-in? 24 hours. Right before the weigh-in. And you have to be on weight, like, right then and there. Yeah. So, it's usually at what time the weigh-in? In the morning? Uh, I'll say 11 a.m., and I start cutting weight 7 p.m. the day before. So, 7 p.m. to 11 p.m. for four hours, maybe lose, like, nine pounds. Then, uh, within the... It's 11 p.m. Now, I have 12 hours until weigh-ins. Maybe lose mm, 0.7 
until the morning, like 7 p.m. And then from 7 p.m. to 10, I'm losing the last three pounds because it's so hard to lose that water. So then after that, I finally made 146. And I'm like, fuck. (laughs) You made it. Yeah. Damn. Okay, so it's a tough, tough wake up, man. Yeah. Tough. And all this, um, you weigh in after that. And then how do you rehydrate after that? After that, you got to drink two gallons of water. And and then you got to go on the seafood diet. Uh, I see, I eat. Everything you see, you fucking eat that shit. <laughs> That's what it is. Everything. Yep. So what do, you, what do you get up to? About, <laughs> I think about 170. 170? Yeah. So you 145 all the way up to 170. In a day. In a day. And you, how's that? You feel good? Your body takes it well? Feel like a fucking a juggernaut. <laughs> you put on so much. That's crazy, man. So at 145, that's your weight class right now. Yeah. 145. Ever think of going up or anything like that in the future? You want to dominate that. My goal is I want to go down 135. I want to win a title there. 145, win a title there. 155, win a title there. And then fight for the 170 title Sheesh. when I'm like 33 years old. Okay. You got some time. You got a decade. Yeah. A decade to do all that. Yep. That's four titles in a decade. That's Every two and a half years, maybe. Mm-hmm. Fucking boom, boom, boom. Dominate, dominate, dominate. Yep. Sick, man. But that's the real goal is the three titles. The, three the, titles. F- the last title is like a, like that's fucking goat. Yeah. Like people are going to take a long time to catch up yeah. to that, you know? So that's like the legend one. Like that's, that's the main one. But the three titles are, are, are what's that's, the goal? That's like the three titles is like, I, I'm going to do that. Yeah, that's I truly feel that I'm going to win three yeah. titles. Yeah. Like 135, I'm going to knock that fool out. 145, I'm going to smoke that fool. 155 is going to be my best fight because yeah. I'm going to be stocky. I'm going to be strong. Yeah. I'm going to smoke that motherfucker Hell too. Yeah. Hell yeah. Talking about Evan Maymore, some of the fighters you look up to. Let's, uh, say, let's say currently. Currently. Some of the fighters you look up to currently. I fuck with Nate Diaz. I just think, won yesterday. Huh? He just won yesterday. Yeah, okay, okay, yeah. Okay. Shout out to Nate Diaz. Uh, I like Nate Diaz. I think he keeps it real. He's just himself, you know. Okay, sweet. And then uh, I don't know. Bobby Green is my teammate, so I look up to Bobby Green. Uh, you like their styles? I like how they they carry themselves. Like they don't really, they don't really give a fuck. Yeah, they're just <laughs> fighters. Yeah, they're fighters. What they do? They're like they're like more. They're real fighters. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Like. I like Khabib too. I look up to Khabib a lot, but these guys like those guys really choose pick and choose who they want to fight. Yeah. Like Bobby and Nate Diaz are like, who, oh, you say you're gonna you want to fight me, then let's fight. Let's yeah, go. Yeah, yeah. We're so gonna fight. Real fighters. Real that's fighters. That's the name of his of his company too. Real fighting, right? Yeah. I've seen it. Yeah, and that, that's the that's the thing about about Nate too. I've been following him for some time now. And it's just he's himself. He don't give a fuck what anyone thinks, and he fights anybody, anytime, any place. You know. Yep. He's obviously a superstar, but like. That's what got him into stardom, just being himself, being real. So those two guys are your main main two, Bobby Green and and Nate Diaz. Yeah. Kind of you model, let's say their their character, just because they're themselves, right? Themselves. Um, skill wise, I got my own. I got my you own. Got your own. My you own, own character. Yeah, yeah, my yeah own, for sure. For sure. Yeah, my own beliefs and the yeah. way I want to handle my for shit. Sure. Yeah. So it's just they're them, and that's what you like. That they're them. They're in their own category. They're in their own lane, and you're in your own lane. But you're you. Yeah. Right. What are some like skills that you kind of model or you you feel like you're you're on your own path when it comes to skill, when it comes to like like, like my own style? Yeah, your own style. Well, I, I, I've honestly I've taken a lot of Bobby's and Nate's style. OK. Yeah. Because I went to training with Nate uh, maybe like a year ago I and that. I learned a lot of boxing from from being out in their camp. And then I spot with Bobby Green all the time. So I've learned a lot from him. And then I got my own shit that I like to do. Yeah. So I kind of took some of the stuff that they've done, and then I have my own style, and then uh, and then I have my coaches that also add to what I do. Yeah. Okay. Sick. On your goat mountain, who do you, who do you have for MMA? Goat. Goat mountain, like right like now. Like what? Like four? Yeah. Let's do four. Um, Nick Diaz. Okay. Um. Let me see. Who's the goat? Mm, Tony Cortez. That's right. I expected that one. Shit, <laughs> better. Uh, <laughs> I think Conor McGregor did a good job. Uh, he he like uh, he worked the system pretty good. You know, yeah. he made his money. Like he that. didn't let nobody fucking use use and abuse him. Yep. Um, 
and I'll say Khabib. Okay. What do you think of John Jones? I think John Jones took steroids. Okay, you're totally hundred <laughs> percent against that shit, right? Yeah, I don't I don't I don't like steroids. That's cheating. That's cheating to me. I feel that for sure. Yeah. Okay, so John Jones completely out of it. Anyone that does that type of stuff. Anybody who's on steroids it doesn't even count. Okay, for sure. What do you think of Mike Tyson? Mike Tyson's the best ever. He's the greatest fighter. That's, that's <laughs> what I was waiting for, man, because I hear um on when the the announcers introduce you, they're like, This is the new Mike Tyson of this era. They've already compared you to to Mike Tyson. Like yeah. when you're coming out on the walk, like the new Mike Tyson of this era. And you could see the aura, man. You can see it. Like you're you're you have it. We wanna know something crazy before I even started my MMA career when I was on drugs. I always thought to myself that one day me and Mike Tyson would like come together and help people. Yeah. That's my goal one day, my dream. Hell yeah, man. That's dope because I think both of you guys have like, what, what do you think? You guys have some similarities? I would say so because he's also gone through like the, the DMT journey and oh, stuff. That's true. I've done, I honestly, I did all that stuff before he even did it. Okay. When I was younger, you know? But ever since then, when he did it, it, it kind of became a big thing after him, yeah. you know? So I think that we can relate in that. Like, we know what that's like to do ceremonies with, like, shamans and indigenous people. Yeah. And it's both, it's changed his life and it's changed my life, too. Completely, completely, man. Uh, to close it up, Tony, let's talk about the purpose. The purpose, um, you, I think what makes you mature, what has really after talking to you right now for the past hour, what's really shaped your life is like having a bigger purpose than just yourself. Mm -hmm. So you want to help out people who are dealing in drugs right now. They're, they're in drugs because you've gone through it. You've suffered from it too, from other people. So is that the bigger purpose? MMA is going to be the path to that, but the bigger purpose is to help people. Yeah. I would say to help people, people who don't love themselves, you know, a lot of people go through that, like from their upbringing or their childhood and then uh, I just want to be an example to find their way out of that. Because it, it, statistically, I'm supposed to be in prison right now because of my dad growing up with a single mom. Like, What is it like? Fucking 76% yeah. of people who come from single moms end up in prison. Yep. I've Dad. never been to prison. I've never been to jail. And that's what, like I, I have pride. I'm proud of myself for that because I know that that could have been easy for me. So... Uh, so I forgot my point, but the purpose. Yeah, that's one. Of, that's part of my purpose right there. And then just you know, I know I know a lot of people who've been through a lot of a lot of bad things, and then I use those things as my fuel. Like uh, like my last fight was the breast cancer. Um, my aunt, my dad's sister, actually has breast cancer right now. Uh, one of my friends, Christian, his mom passed away from breast cancer. And then one of my sponsors, Peter, his wife currently has breast cancer. So then that was like my my motivation for this last fight was to just like honor, show them honor and respect. And it's like, look, I, I, I'm like, I want to represent you guys when I come out here because they're the real fighters, you know, like people that have gone through that. That's sad, you know, so. Is that what inspired the pink shorts then? Yeah, that's what inspired okay, the pink that. shorts. Just to like, just to like represent them. Like, look, like I'm out here for you guys. Yeah. And honestly, I think that that's what keeps me winning. Because if it just becomes about me, and if it if it becomes a selfish thing, then I feel like I don't deserve the win. Yeah. It's like, oh, I want to be rich. I want to be famous. I want to do this. I want to do that. Of course, that's part of it. But at the same time, it's like. What am I going to use that fame and that money for to to be a selfish, evil person yeah. or or to represent and help the people? Yeah, of course. The people that are just like me. That's that Muhammad Ali shit. You feel that's me? That's right. That's, right. <laughs> oh, that's cool. It's, it's the whole purpose, too. And that's why I love I'm in business. Right. The whole purpose of business. And I talk about it almost in every podcast is to bring a product or a service that's going to serve the world somehow. All that other money shit, the jets, all that's going to come. Example, again, going back to Patrick Beck David, he gave people opportunities. You go to PHP, how many agents does he have that he gave opportunities to make a better life? Yeah. Right? Tons, tons, I think thousands, thousands of agents that he's given the opportunity to make a better life. Then the money comes. But yeah. you have to give people the opportunity. You have to do it for the people. You have to do it for 
the world so it can be better. Even if it's just your com local community, your group of friends, your family, if you do it for them, your purpose becomes way bigger than just yourself. So whenever you're feeling down, and I think it's easier to quit on yourself. Sometimes, you know, it's like, fuck it, it's me. You know, it's just me that I'm going to buy this car for. It's just me that I'm just going to do all this. But when you make it about the fucking world and an impact, you have so much more drive to want to fucking pursue it with everything. So it's a perfect way to how you put it. I'm fighting for other people. You know, if it's just for me, like, I eh, probably kind of like, it's selfish. What the fuck's the point? What am I going to do with all this shit? You know? I've lived my life like that my whole life, and that's never got me anywhere good. That's taken me down the wrong path on multiple occasions. You know, it's like, I don't even want to be materialistic anymore or none of that. Like, everything that I do, I want it to be for my family, my future family, for somebody else. It's not for me anymore. Like, I'm, I'm living and I'm going to die for others, not for myself. Love it, man. Lastly, where does the name The Conqueror come from? From It came from Hernan Cortez because he's got the same last name. But he said he had a quote that was... Uh, the Spanish have a disease that can only be cured by gold. So they were so evil and nasty when they conquered and killed and destroyed all the indigenous people for gold. And, I, and that la my last name, I have the same last name as him. I don't want it to be known for that. So I want to be a conqueror for love, for life, and for people, and for unity, not for gold. You're a different conqueror. Mm-hmm. Love it, man. That's a and my last name. name is going to fucking outshine his it last better, name. better shit. It better. That's dope, man. Because Hernan Cortes was a Spanish conqueror that came in into the, like you said, indigenous people and took over. And he did chase gold, right? Mm -hmm. He chased gold, killed a bunch of people. I mean, his army killed a bunch of people, our people, um, and took over. But you're going to make that name bigger than his. Mm -hmm. That's the goal. Yes, sir. Love it. Love it, Tony. Um, Tony, thank you so much for joining us on this podcast, man. Super, super excited to see your career. Big fan. I'm sure you're going to gain a lot of fans here, too, uh, from sharing your story. And we're all going to follow you, man, to your path to greatness. Keep inspiring. You inspire me. I'm over a decade older than you, bro. And the way that you speak, um, the way that you carry yourself, not only younger generations are looking up to you, people like me, too. People like me that, that you know, we're Thank we're you, older, though. That means a lot to it, me. It really is, man. And I'm sure older, older people are going to look up to you, man, because you Thank have you. this energy, brother. Pleasure. Thank you, Tony. Thank you. Thank you guys for having me. Of course, of course, man. Um, tell us where they can follow you. Tony Cortez MMA, T O N Y C O R T E Z M M A on Instagram, baby. Let's go. One last thing, and this is the biggest shout out, the most important one. Where do you get your meals from? Get it with Brit. Let's go. That's right on Instagram, baby. All right. Thank you guys so much for tuning into the first meal podcast. Make sure to follow Tony Cortez on all social medias. I promise you, greatness, man. I don't just bring people on the podcast. I don't. You guys not only a lot of people in my circle. If we're bringing the guests, it's because they're bringing value. He's bringing more than value, man. He's gonna entertain you with these fights. He's gonna entertain you. You're gonna follow his path to greatness. I'm telling you now. Record it. Screenshot it. Let's go. Let's go. Good one, Tony. Thank you, brother. Thank you, guys, bro. Thank you.